Nietzschean Ressentiment. Nietzsche, paradoxically, is one of the great postmodernist heroes. They cite him for his perspectivalism in epistemology, for his use of the enigmatic and loosely structured aphoristic form instead of the more scientific treatise form, and for his psychological acuteness in diagnosing decay and hypocrisy. I want to use Nietzsche against the postmodernists for a change. Nietzsche's concept of ressentiment is close to the English resentment, but with a more curdled bitterness, more seething and poisoned and bottled up for a long time. Nietzsche uses ressentiment in the context of developing his famous account of master and slave morality in Beyond Good and Evil, and more systematically in Genealogy of Morals. Master morality is the morality of the vigorous, life-loving, strong. It is the morality of those who love adventure, who delight in creativity and in their own sense of purposefulness and assertiveness. Slave morality is the morality of the weak, the humble, those who feel victimized and afraid to venture forth into the big bad world. Weaklings are chronically passive, mostly because they're afraid of the strong. As a result, the weak feel frustrated. They cannot get what they want out of life. They become envious of the strong. And they also secretly start to hate themselves for being so cowardly and weak. But no one can live thinking he or she is hateful. And so the weak invent a rationalization, a rationalization that tells them that they are the good and the moral because they are weak, humble, and passive. Patience is a virtue, they say, and so is humility, and so is obedience, and so is being on the side of the weak and the downtrodden. And of course, the opposites of those things are evil. Aggressiveness is evil, and so is pride, and so is independence, and so is being physically and materially successful. But of course, it's a rationalization, and a smart weakling is never quite going to convince himself of it. That will do damage inside. Meanwhile, the strong will be laughing at him, and that will do damage inside. And the strong and the rich will be carrying on getting stronger and richer and enjoying life. And seeing that will do damage inside. Eventually, the smart weakling will feel such a combination of self-loathing and envy of his enemies that he will need to lash out. He will feel the urge to hurt in any way he can his hated enemy. But of course, he cannot risk direct physical confrontation. He is a weakling. His only weapons are words. And so, Nietzsche argued, the weakling becomes extremely clever with words. In our time, the world created by the Enlightenment is strong, active, and exuberant. For a while in the past century, socialists could believe that the revolution was coming, that woe would come to them that are rich, and that blessed would be the poor. But that hope has been dashed cruelly. Capitalism now seems like a case of twice two makes four, and like Dostoevsky's Underground Man, it is easy to see that the most intelligent socialists would just hate that fact. Socialism is the historical loser, and if socialists know that, they will hate that fact, they will hate the winners for having won, and they will hate themselves for having picked the losing side. Hate, as a chronic condition, leads to the urge to destroy. Yet political failure is too limited as an explanation for the range of nihilistic themes found in postmodernism. Postmodern thinkers hold that not just politics has failed, everything has failed. Being, as Hegel and Heidegger taught us, really has come to nothing. Postmodernism then, in its most extreme forms, is about driving that point home and making the nothing reign. Clearly, I am flirting with ad hominem here, so I will let the postmodernists speak for themselves. 